What is cardative therapy? It's a Christian experiential approach derived from the resources of the Christian traditions and everyday life and deeply informed by evidence-based secular and Christian models of therapy used to promote the healing and maturation of the psychological heart. So the Bible uses the word heart all the time. Um, it's the most important psychological term in the Bible, some, uh, according to biblical scholars. Uh, my, you know, our favorite verse, probably, if you think about it, my, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus taught us that. Wow, that's so important. But why is the heart not used in modern psychology? It's a, it's a kind of a conundrum. Um, it's used in the Bible. It's used throughout the Christian tradition. Augustine used it. My favorite, uh, one of my favorite Christian psychologists is Blaise Pascal. And, and he has this beautiful quote in his Penses, the heart has reasons that reason doesn't know. So Pascal and folks in the Christians in the 1600s were already making an important distinction between the mind and reason and the heart and where our emotions and our values and our morality are stored. So um, there are many idioms in the English language that use the word heart. And I suspect that in your language, you either have translations of these in your own language or you have your own idioms that use heart in a special way. But this illustrates, you know, Ted was broken hearted. You, that, that phrase is in the Bible, is in the Old Testament. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. You have a phrase like that in your language? Um, they had a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Sam is a hard-hearted man. I think that's in the Old Testament too, hard at heart. Um, she has a heart of gold. That's, a, that's a, a nice English phrase that she's very, she's um, very compassionate and loving person. That's what it means. Um, well, the, the, the heart is a term then that refers to, I, I would say, the experience of something that moves us, emotion. The term emotion is in itself tells us that feelings move us either towards the good, if it's a positive emotion, or away from the, away from the bad for negative emotion. Um, and, and we feel them, we feel emotions in our chest, in our torso. And this is where Ellsworth and I are, are real buddies. buddies, very much buddies. Thank you with my English. Uh, that, that's great. Um, because, because I met him like two years ago, and it's like, oh, I love what you're doing because he's so into his body, and I've learned from him. And I hope he's learned from me because we're trying to develop a rich Christian experiential embodied therapy model, you know. I, I did, uh, I've done some research on Twitter, and the word heart is used a lot in English, a lot. In five hours, I gathered 100,000 tweets with the word heart in them. And 15% um, of them were about the body, the, the heart in our bodies that pumps blood. 85% were like those idioms, I'm broken hearted, my girlfriend left me, uh, and so on. Well, in everyday life, we, use, we still use the word heart. Why is it that modern psychology ignores it? There are reasons, and there are good reasons. They, the focus is on the brain, and, and the, uh, the, the processing of emotion is in, is in our skull, up in our head. Here's the point, but we feel Emotions are registered the way that our nervous system was wired in our bodies. Uh, you've heard the term this week, interoception. Uh, Ellsworth use, uses it a lot. And it's just the, the perception of feelings in my body. That's all it means. And therapists need to be really good at that. And we're, one of our goals is to help our counselees become better at interoception. What's going on in your body? That's why I, I often will say, how are you feeling right now? Where, 
where do you feel what you're feeling? And to help them become better a student of their bodies, uh, where it's registering. So, so I, I acknowledge that the brain is where we process emotion, but I don't feel my emotion up here. And so a more experiential orientation is to help people identify where I'm feeling it, because this becomes then the key to me working through my feelings and, 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 and so that I can get healing. Because if you don't have the feeling, you can't get the healing. It's another way of putting it. You understand where I'm coming from. And this is what, what it's all about. So I have explanation of why people are, are not focused on the physical, why, why people are, are not focused in the heart in modern psychology, but I'm trying to build a case with language study and neurophysiology to, to show why we need to get back to the way we experience our emotions in everyday life. And it's more phenomenological than neurological, but it's both, it really is both. Um, Mandarin has lots of heart words in the Mandarin language, and it's in Chinese on the other side of the world, you know? But, um, so I consider emotions to be really valuable. They're meaningful. They, they communicate meaning about good and about bad. And, uh, the, and human development is to help to cultivate and, and um, modify our emotional life so that it becomes increasingly rich and complex. And uh, at, in childhood, it's focused more on pleasure and pleasure is good, pain is bad. And that's foundational to human life. But we don't wanna stay there. As an adult, there are more important things than pleasure and pain. Otherwise, we're gonna be a very superficial human being. Uh, in, in sort of the richest view would be that good is what draws me, it makes me virtuous, and bad is what makes me narcissistic, it's what makes me selfish, thank you, um, and um, takes me away from God, and maybe we could say the highest aspect of the good is God, who is beautiful, so that as, we, as our emotional life becomes richer and, and, and more well-developed, it becomes more virtuous and more holy and more focused on beauty. And the most beautiful being in the universe is God. And then a, another beauty is the beauty of human character. Um, and so the healthiest human beings, according to a Christian framework, and you know this goes back to Thomas Aquinas and Augustine, is the, the beauty of virtue. Um, that's really where Christian therapy should be taking us. Not just to be, um, to not have pain anymore, uh, to not have psychopathology, but ultimately to become a more beautiful person. Uh, and that's where cardiative therapy is wanting to go. So I, I don't know if you've seen a, a slide like this, but um, Each, each of these negative emotions has a special kind of core meaning. Anger is related to injustice, sadness to, related to loss, fear, there's danger. And so in, in exploring emotions in cardiative therapy, uh, we're, we're wanting to help people, what's it mean? What, why are, see, rather than um, when I, you know, if I, See, what was that verse in, in the Psalm 56? In, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What I would want to say is, I won't be afraid in a, in a panicky way, like, ah, run away. But if I'm getting healing in the Lord and Jesus, I'm going to be able to tolerate my emotion and work through it so that I can experience its meaningfulness in a full way and then learn how to surrender it to God so that I, so that I can be free of it. That's the goal. But, but that, that would be quite a long process. And when I'm working with somebody, it's the same thing. Tell me, what is, where's that fear coming from? What's that about? Oh, well, I grew up, my, my dad was always yelling at me and he sometimes hit me. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's focus on what, what, what event do you remember from your story that sticks out the most that brought about that fear? We might spend a few weeks on that. 
Uh, maybe they'll do some journaling about it as they're working through the emotion, experiencing it, re-experiencing it, and, and then gradually we'll, we'll fold in some new experience that will modify it and help them to become help, um, more of a whole person rather than controlled by the fear. So in that sense, the Bible, the Old Testament, I love the Old Testament, I, I really do, but, but we have to read it in the, in the context in which it was written. The Old Testament was the Old Covenant and it was pointing us to Jesus. It didn't have all the answers. Jesus is the answer, but he hadn't come yet. So we can't read it and just say, oh, I need to be like that, or we're gonna turn into a Pharisee. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, pretty, it's pretty complicated, but that's kind of how I, I'm still using the Bible to shape my, to shape cardiative therapy, but I, I hope it's more sophisticated. Um, I, I would like to quickly go through this and maybe, you know, if I come, if I'm able to come next year, I might have to go to another conference next year and I might not be here next year. Um, but if I, uh, if not next year, it would be the year after. Um, maybe we'll spend a lot more time working through the, the nuances of this model, but this model really is a model for the whole therapy journey. Let's say it could take a couple years of working through someone's trauma and difficulties over a couple year period, but, but this cycle can also be done in one session. And if we're successful this afternoon, I will show how, how you can do it in an hour, as well as think about it spread over the course of a, of a, of a few years of therapy. So it, it's a cycle that is both can be done in an hour, but really you need, I think we need to understand it that it, it takes a long time to get to do it through a lot of challenging experiences. But first, in therapy, we need to get to know the counselee's narrative and what their suffering is, their, their sins, the damage and weakness that they experience and their, and their triggers, their history, basically, their background. And in this time, their negative emotions are going are to get activated. Um, but the difference is, is that we're going to be kind and gentle with them and empathic and help them to hang in there. Don't run from this negative emotion, but, but let's talk about it more. But what will also come up is the defenses because we're all running from our negative emotions. They're unpleasant, we don't like them. So th we're gonna start to point out, gee, you know, it looked like you were gonna start to cry and then you pushed it away. What was that about? Why did that happen? What, what, what was going on there? And so we're, then we start to help them learn defense prevention to, to stop the defense from activating so that I could feel more deeply what I was avoiding before and explore that while the two of us are helping to co-regulate the negative emotion. You don't have to be as afraid because you're not alone right now because I care about you. Let's talk some more so that they start to experience the first stage of the negative emotion is gonna be unproductive. Most of us were not taught by our parents how to experience negative emotions in a healthy way, in an in a unproductive way. So it's gonna be, uh, so, we, so we learned how to, how to maybe be restless. You know, I, I just need to get away from this. I need to run from it. Frustrated anger, um, hopelessness, uh, excessive fear or sadness that overwhelms me and shuts me down. And then maybe I watch TV until it goes away or, or I, get, I get high, whatever. But we need to experience this first and identify that this is not actually going to be helpful. But hey, you're feeling. You're feeling more than you used to. This is good, but it's not productive yet. And of course, the therapist is expected to pro throughout provide loving, dialogical, and strategic support, helping to guide this process and using various techniques. You know, there's a thousand things you can do in a, in a session. Um, and, and creativity and wisdom, you know, help to guide what we're gonna do today based on what the counselee brings in today based on the story that we already know. 
And then also sometimes we can bring Jesus into the session. We don't always have to do that. And of course, if the client doesn't want it, we don't do it. But, but if they're a Christian client, then we're wanting to bring in Jesus. And I would say, you know, at the beginning, I don't know how often, maybe once a month, we'll do something with Jesus. But over time, maybe more and more, because we're also training them to have Jesus with them. Because Jesus is with them all the time, he, could, he or she can do more work, therapy work with Jesus throughout the week than with me once a week for one hour. So the long-term goal is Jesus is my therapist. And that's my belief. That's what I want to train my counselees how to do. Eventually, what we do as we work through this process, we help them to, they're going to encounter some basic psycho-spiritual needs that, were, that have not been met. They need safety. They need soothing. They need people to connect with them in the deepest way. They need love. They need somebody to be able to hold their, their imagination. Uh, I'm sorry, their, um, their emotion. And uh, to promote agency in the light of their feelings and, and struggles. And, um, and as they come to terms with these created needs that God built into them, then they can start experiencing fulfilling emotions. Lament, a healthy lament. Righteous anger. That abuser, what they did was wrong. It wasn't my fault. It was wrong what he did to me. And to be able to spend a season of anger at the perpetrator, that's important. That's essential. We see a glimmer of that in the psalm, one of the psalms that we read in the previous hour. Uh, Lord, would you, would you judge my enemy? That's an anticipation, I think, of New Covenant uh, righteous anger, uh, to help people feel true shame about a sin that they, that they lived in for a while, but also to help them feel forgiveness in a deep way, not a superficial, just in our heads, but we actually feel forgiven because it's resolved some of the shame and guilt. And I, these are concepts that I talk about in God and Soul Care. It's a textbook that I've written for Christian therapy. And I, I don't have time to really go into uh, to them, but we're, we're trying to help them to differentiate the good and the bad in their emotions and the good and the bad in their souls so that they can become more of a whole and virtuous person in the heart where there's a greater faith, humility, surrender, repentance, agency, and so on. But that's, this is a long-term goal. This is the goal of the Christian life. And yeah, we're not going to get there in the first few sessions, the first few months, maybe not the first couple years. In a way, maybe ever fully, you know, only Jesus is this. But, but this is the kind of the process going into the valley, if I can use this, you know, but then also coming up and resurrection. This is, this is the process of crucifixion and identifying with Jesus' death over time, you know, and then this is being raised from the dead in Christian therapy. So that's a lot to throw at you in one uh, slide. Uh, this is really at the heart of my model uh, of, and you know, that I couldn't have developed without Mac Michael Stratting. Uh, because he was studying emotion-focused therapy at the highest level in, our, in, in, uh, in Canada. Actually, he went to a university in Canada where um, Antonio Pasquale Leone uh, was his mentor, and he's one of the leaders in emotion-focused therapy, studied with Leslie Greenberg. You may have heard Leslie Greenberg's name. Um, Sue Johnson is another famous couples therapist who works with emotion-focused therapy. Canada, for whatever reason, seems to have all the best leading uh, emotion-focused therapists, but, um, but I, I, that, it's experiential. That's why I've always been attracted to it. I've been working out of that model for a long time. But what I'm wanting to do is I'm not wanting to just, you know, it's, my model's emotion-focused therapy and I bring in a little bit of Jesus. I'm wanting to really, it's a, you know, kind of organically out of the Christian faith, a heart model of therapy that happens to have learned some really great things from, Secular emotion-focused therapy. You, you see the difference? 
rather than beginning with emotion-focused therapy and then bringing in a couple Bible verses, I want to begin with the Christian faith, which prioritizes the heart and always has, and then enrich it with some of the research. And then well, I need to do research on this. We, you know, Michael and I are hoping to do research on this model um, and document it. 